appeared to them. Yeah. Yeah. Here we Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Ash Wednesday service, our joint service with, with uh, St. Bartholomew's Episcopalian Church, St. Paul's UMC Church, Salem, Brookville, Salem, Clarksburg, Mount Tabor, and Wesley Grove, UMC. I'm very thankful to, to join and worship all, all of you this evening. Uh, I'm Pastor Will. I'm the, I'm the pastor here at St. Paul, and so I just want to get a, a little bit of house cleaning out of the way first. If you need to use the restroom, we have them. They are about as far away from this room as you can get, so you would have to go out the back door down two flights of steps, and then at the end of the hallway in the basement of the education wing, there's two restrooms. So if you need to use them, please do. Just want to make sure you all know where they're at, because it can be a maze at some point. And then I want to share one exciting announcement um, uh, uh, coming up this week. At Mount Tabor, uh, correct, Mount Tabor this Sunday at 7 p.m., they, uh, they are hosting a healing service uh, on, on, so this, sat, this Sunday, sorry, February 26th at 7 p.m. at Mount Tabor, a healing service both for body, mind, and spirit, but also focusing on uh, seeking to pray for healing for our country and for the world, for the deep divisions that we feel in our society and abroad. Uh, and so I invite you to join them for that. You, you, you may have received an announcement uh, 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 if, with your bulletin. I invite you to, to join that if that's something that, you're, that speaks to your spirit during this season. Um, and so let's take a moment and center ourselves on why we're here this evening, to begin our Lenten journey, to center ourselves on Christ, to remember our mortality, and also the grace that God reaches out to us with in our mortality. So would you take a moment just to take a deep breath in, and a deep breath out. One more deep breath in, and a deep breath out. If you would join me in our gathering words that are in your bulletin. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, you do not desire a fast of sackcloth and ashes but a fast of righteousness. You ask us to loose the bonds of injustice, undo the thongs of the yoke, and set the captives free. Train our hearts to do what is right, O God, not what is easy. May we live our days among the righteous that we may never be moved, but dwell secure in your mercy and your grace. Amen. Will you please now join with us in singing hymn number 352, It's Me, It's Me, It's Me, O Lord. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, 
standing in the need of prayer. Hallelujah. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, oh it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. A reading from Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, and 2, 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it's near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will again be after them in ages to come. Yet, even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? And a reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the second Corinthians, chapter 5, 20, verses uh, 6, 10. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain, for he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor, now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, and truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine, yet regarded as impostors, known, yet regarded as unknown, dying, and yet we live on, beaten, and yet not killed, sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, poor, yet making many rich, having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is number 382, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Could you stand, please, if you are able?
This evening comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 21. Chapter 6, verse 1. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. That truly I tell you, you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Verse 16. And whenever you fast, do not look abysmal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may not be seen by others. But your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, nor where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good evening. Good evening. Will you pray with me? O 
Oh God of us all, we ask that as you have been present with us this evening, you would fill us and give us your glory. Help us to know the truth, to know your presence, and to be aware of you. Amen. I love Lent. I have loved Lent since I was a kid. How many of you remember being in fifth grade? <laughs> so when I was in fifth grade, that was the very first time that I gave something up for Lent. And I decided to give up sweets. And why I gave up sweets, I don't know. I must have heard from some of the adults around me that you gave up chocolate for Lent. And I gave up sweets, and then the very first week of Lent, I go into my fifth grade classroom, and there was a birthday. Who knows what happens on a birthday when you're in fifth grade? Cake. And guess what went right out of my head? Everything having to do with Lent. I gladly grabbed my plate, pulled it to me, and started digging in. And about halfway through, and I think I grabbed it with more enthusiasm than normal. And as I'm halfway through my cake, suddenly it occurs to me that it is Lent. And I have just given up sweets. And I burst into tears. And I was inconsolable. I ran to my teacher and I said, I have to call my dad and see if I can get permission to eat this. Uh, my dad was the pastor of the church, and so my teacher said, no, we don't, we can't call our parents, but I was insistent and inconsolable until my teacher pulled out her secret side phone that we weren't supposed to know about, allowed me to call my dad, who in the most baffled tones said, Emily, it's okay. God's not going to be mad at you. You can finish your slice of cake. And that was my first experience of Lent. But I've always been fascinated by it. What is this 40-day period of contemplation, denial, holiness? If I engage in it, will its holiness rub off on me and make me somehow shiny? Do the su suggested scriptural disciplines make sense? Does giving something up really bring me closer to God? This is a debate that I had with my dad a couple years after the cake debacle about the usefulness of giving up chocolate. I said, this is useless. This does nothing to bring me closer to God. The only thing it's going to do is make me miserable. Why on earth is everyone running around giving up chocolate for Lent? My sacrifice wouldn't be doing anything productive. Now, looking back with the language that I have now, I might say it didn't do anything to bring God's kingdom to earth, so why bother? My dad carefully explained that fasting is a personal choice, that for some people, giving something up for a time reminded them of God's holiness in a way that connected them to God. I explained that that was a load of crap and that if I wanted to get closer to God, I should add something to my spiritual life instead. Despite my misgivings, I have given things up or added things for almost every Lent since then. I told you I'm fascinated by it. I don't really understand it, so I just keep trying. And amazingly, each Lent that I've practiced has changed my life in some way. One year, I, I, as a kid, I gave money to an organization. One year, I gave up junk food, and by the end of that Lent, I'd lost my taste for it. One year, I gave up driving and learned the challenges of being out in all weather. One notable year in high school, I gave up boys. I can't tell you how my life choices improved for the rest of that month. Fasting seems to be one of the most common things that people do for Lent. Giving up chocolate, alcohol, smoking. 
Today is the day to post our Lenten disciplines on Facebook like a springtime resolution. It's time to seek accountability and community through our thoughtful sharing. Or is it simply time to seek attention? Ooh, pastor, why would you say that to me? What a yucky thing for me to say. I don't know why you share your Lenten disciplines with your community. I don't know if it really does help you stay accountable, if it helps give you witness to your faith, if it gives you a chance to publicly choose God. And yet, we have Matthew 6 still ringing in this room. Don't practice your religion in front of people to draw their attention. Don't draw their attention. Lent can be a really holy time, a time for prayer, fasting, giving, but it can also be a time of performance. You don't have to raise your hand if you've ever felt that, but in your heart you can raise your hand if you've ever felt that. It can be a time when we put out our piety on display for the sake of others, Perhaps it's ostensibly with the goal of teaching them, but surely, surely, a small part of you, a small part of me, likes the reward. You know, the reverence, the awe. The year I gave up driving was very impressive. And you better believe that I told anyone who would listen. I was impressed with my own cleverness. Yes, I was hopeful for the way that God would move in my life. I told you I've been so curious about this. I've wanted to grow deeper, but I think I also wanted to impress people with my sacrifice. And that's not what we're called to do. Lent is not a time to perform. It's a time to be formed. Look at Matthew 6. Here we have a warning against public spiritual disciplines. Don't pray out loud like the hypocrites. They have received their reward. You see, there is a reward. Don't give publicly. In fact, do it so secretly that your left and right hands can't account for each other. And when you pray, do it in secret so that your Father who sees in secret will reward you. You know what this says to me? If you choose to share your spiritual disciplines with the world, go ahead. You will likely receive your reward from the world. But if you want to be transformed, if you want to know God, let God be the only one you tell. Yeah, okay, pastor. I'll keep it to myself. So what? If I practice my spiritual dis disciplines publicly, I will inevitably change, my actions will inevitably change based on other people watching. Yeah? So there's a study, a number of studies that have shown this, that when we are observed, we act differently than when we are not. Now, I know this firsthand. A couple of months ago, I was on a walk with my dog. And if you are from my congregation, you may know what's coming next. They had already gone to the bathroom a few times each, and I was out of poop bags. And so, of course, sorry, Nancy, they decided to go one more time. And I looked left, and I looked right, and I wondered if the people were watching me through their windows. And so I rifled through my pockets really fast so it would look like I was looking for a poop bag that I knew wasn't there. And then I went, oh, no, I don't have one. I better go. I knew I didn't have one. But I wanted them to think that I was trying. 
How many of us have been in this situation where your dog uh, does their unmentionable in a place where it's slightly inconvenient and you look left and you look right and you think, do I really have to get that? And if someone's coming, you better believe you go get it. And if nobody's coming, maybe you don't. We change our actions based on whether or not someone is watching. Now, I don't think my husband does. I think that he is who he is, whether or not someone's watching, but I am not as pure as he is. God forbid that these strangers think badly of me. So it may mean that when you share your Lenten discipline with somebody, that will cause you to act differently. It may cause you to do more of your Lenten discipline. It may cause you to do less. But it will cause you to do it differently. And here's the problem with that. That's not you. That's not you. That's the you that you are cultivating for them. That's not you. That's not the you that God created and called. That's not the you that God formed out of the earth and put breath into and said, you are my beloved child. That is somebody that is performing for the world. And I don't want that for you. I don't want you to perform for God. Because what a loss that would be. That would be a loss for you, that would be a loss for the world, and that would be a loss for God. Because when people know, we act differently. God wants to see the you that you are without your mask. The you who you are when you're alone. The you who you are, no posturing, no fancy words or cultural rewards, just you. You showing up because you love God. I finally figured out why people fast. I might have a different reason next year, but for this year, it's to show yourself that you can survive any discomfort except for the one that comes from being without God. I can live without chocolate, TV, my favorite books, makeup, alcohol, even my car, but I can't live without God. So if you choose to practice Lent this year, if you choose to get ashes on your forehead at the end of the evening, the ashes to symbolize our finitude. And maybe this year, keep it between you and God. When you get home, wash your face. Don't post it on Facebook, but just let it be holy and private and a gift of love. Don't let it be a performance. Just let it be you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there would be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. 
In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us bow before our creator and redeemer. Let us now pause for a moment of silence. Amen. At this time, we will offer a thanksgiving over the ashes. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. We ask, O God, that you would grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray together. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'll invite our clergy pastor friends. We'll have two in the back, two in the front. And as you come, we will impose the ashes for us all.
join us. Our next hymn is I Surrender All, number 354. And we'll sing verses 2, 3, and 4. You would join me in the confession and pardon that's written in your, uh, that's the extra sheet of paper in your bulletin. We'll read the bold parts together. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned, and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, 
and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your spirit from me. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. God's peace. We've come to your first opportunity to secretly practice a Lenten discipline. It's time for our tithes and our offerings. This evening, our offering is going towards Damascus help. Um, those of you who are used to only help, it, this is the equivalent, but in Damascus, um, we have heard that their shelves are empty, um, so we'd like to help fill them. Um, I don't know, I don't, none of you would do this, but I'm putting my money in the plate. We're not doing that because we're practicing our Lenten discipline, right? So that's my encouragement to you. But seriously, this is, um, this is a chance to do something good for the world. Um, one of my favorite things about doing services with everybody is it truly benefits our community. Um, and we get to lift up uh, what it means to be a Christian and be the hands and feet of God in our communities. So uh, thank you for being part of this service and giving back to our local community.
Please come forward. to us, you have given to us in ways measurable and immeasurable, and we ask that as we start to give back, that you would encourage us and lead us, and that our work would be multiplied as you multiply the loaves and fishes, that a small drop in the bucket would become a wave that the help that we provide for Damascus help this evening would be the beginning of an ocean for them, a way to impact all of Damascus and Olney and bring hunger to its end. In your name we pray. Amen. I ask now that you would join me in the prayer Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our last hymn is number 402, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. And please stand if you're able. We'll sing all four verses. ago, someone who I have known for years, um, I sat him down and knowing me and knowing the time of life I was in probably accused him of never having done a Lenten discipline. And then he told me that he has fasted uh, 
on Fridays of Lent every year for the past 20 years. And I never knew. He took Matthew 6 seriously. He kept it between him and God. He didn't allow his Lenten practice to be a talking point or a chance to toot his own horn. And at first I was annoyed because I was trying to accuse him of something and I was wrong. Um, And that's always annoying. But then I was grateful that he had not made a spectacle of his practice and given me that example. And then I was further grateful that when I asked him about Lenten disciplines, he told me about it. So I think there's a line, right? In general, it's good to keep it to yourself. But if someone is genuinely seeking and asking and wondering, then share it with them with your whole heart that it could be a chance to teach, a chance to illumine God's heart, a chance to make a difference in someone's life, not a spectacle. Because at the end of the day, God wants you, not your performance, not your mask, you. So it's time to begin Lent. We encourage you all to go out in silence. And I encourage you, your pastors may have different advice, but I encourage you to wash your face, to wear your cross on your heart, and to remember that this is holy set-apart time. So go forth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen.